the helicopter flight that was coming over the top of us came right across through there, across the top of here, and the top of the conifers went over that way, and that's where he was dropping product all the way through here on all of our neighbors. You could smell it. When I stepped out on the deck, it was like, oh my God, what is that smell? I mean, it's, it's heavy, it's oily, it's burning. You feel like your sinuses, the whole inside of your nose and your throat and your lungs are getting burnt. He's had like seven or eight bloody yeah. noses. I've had four. I was going to take a shower one night and all of a sudden my nose just starts bleeding. It took me 40 minutes to stop it. A really super humid day where everything just feels really heavy. Huh. That's the way it was with a kind of an odor that you can't really describe. I, mean, I was freaking out. I'm like, you know, we need a voice. Hey, we're down here. We're dying. You know, I mean, people are getting sick, you know, and what for what? For the almighty dollar. I never thought in my entire life I would become an activist. And this is my, this is the platform I started on was him when he started going downhill. When I realized he was poisoned, when I realized I'm going to lose my dog, when I realized somebody did this, whether on purpose or on accident, he should have checked his tanks. Should have checked his tanks. They wanted to get the job done, they wanted to get it done fast, and they didn't pay attention to the weather, and they put people in harm's way. That helicopter that I saw was it was the wind was so strong it was crabbing in the wind like this it looked like it was actually going to crash and then uh, some period of time after that there was a guy that was checking the telephone poles and uh, I started talking to him he showed up on the property and he said what happened back there and I said what do you mean he said over there it looks like a war zone I said what do you mean he says everything is absolutely dead and so I kind of got to the conclusion that maybe they dumped the load there so he wouldn't crash. So this is a beautiful spot. Probably if you went up here, you'd find some, some uh, environmentally protected freshwater mussels. Because when the Native Americans traveled, they liked to travel the creeks. And a lot of it was because of the mussels being a staple. And uh, I was up at the source of this water two days ago. And there were fresh elk droppings. They've just started coming back. The frogs haven't bothered coming back all the way yet. You know, we're kind of a, almost an animal preserve here. Um, they all vacated. They all left the area. And, and some people have talked about it taking 10 years before they'll decide to come back. Um, a lot of that's, there's nothing left to eat after these sprays happen. We have an apple tree, we have six apple trees, but the one out front, closest to where he was standing when he got sprayed, it was full of apples, and they started dropping on the ground, and the deer wouldn't touch them. So when we saw that, we'd even try to get them to eat them, and they would not do it. So he we said, well, we're not eating those apples, and we started buying water to drink at the store. Uh, even the neighbors said, uh, hey, have access to the notifications and are then calling the timber company saying, please tell me so I can evacuate my home before you spray poison on my house. They'll get assurances that they will. And I'd say more than 50% of the time, oh, we forgot to call you. But I think it's just, it's terrible. Really. You shouldn't have to fight over it. You should be able to call and they tell you what the chemicals are so you can tell a doctor and you can get healed up. Yep. But just withholding information is not good.
we're finding more and more people they're depressed uh he's had a real problem with the agitation yeah i did uh uh catherine's husband's been really agitated too and we just keep seeing the same symptoms over and over again people haven't been able to connect, connect the dots See, that's, that's the falsehood behind this whole thing, that they tell you all these chemicals are safe. These sprays, you know, on the label, say, oh, it's safe unless you drink, you know, 10 gallons of it. Well, but what they don't say day. is when you mix them together, what it forms. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can mix two different herbicides together and be lethal. But they don't tell you that. You take 2,4-D and you mix chlorine with it, it, it almost becomes the same uh, as, it, as Agent Orange. Mm -hmm. And that's why, that's why they're hiding the adjuvants and everything else in the, in the tank mix from us. You know, so we don't know what this stuff is going to do to us in the long run. And I enlisted in the Air Force and spent four years there and uh, one year overseas in Vietnam. <coughs> That's where I got exposed to Agent Orange, and I didn't think anything was wrong till oh, I had uh, about six heart attacks. Mm -hmm. and the first one was back about 80, 89, 90, somewhere in there. And then it just kind of progressed until I couldn't do anything, and I got six bypasses, and those occluded, so I had to get six stents put in to open those up. And I've got type 2 diabetes and uh, neuropathy in my hands and feet. I started getting sick shortly after the burning in the spray. And I was alarmed because my wife had had a transplant. So I asked Jeff Crook and their land management guy, as we were logging, they come to our house, if they would let us know before they burned, for she could leave, and before they sprayed, because I knew they did this. I didn't know nothing about the spray, but I know they do it. They didn't tell us either time what they were doing. I personally started getting sick shortly after their first spray. My water comes from above the ground, and if you come up to our land, you'll see the little valley where they sprayed with the bird. I have been getting sicker and sicker. I have medical documentation from the day I started feeling pain. I have a hard time talking to people. I finally ended up all but paralyzed from the pain in my bones, joints. I'm one of the ones that has lost my appetite. I puke almost every morning. I have diarrhea 90% of the time. It's a hard struggle to continue to work right now. I haven't rode my bike since I got sick. I haven't took my boat out on the river since I've been sick. I'm struggling along, and I personally believe it is from this spray. Why are they keeping it a secret? I mean, they probably could eliminate a lot of this, what's going on now, if they've just come out and said, well, it's, I mean, unless it's something really bad, you know. Which it probably is. We've gotten the feeling from a lot of people out here that they, they just want to forget it. They, they just want to forget it. And let's just drop it. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. We can't. We can't. We have too many children out here, too. Uh, we've already heard reports of children who've been exposed, and then they grow up, and, and they have kids, and, and the, the babies have defects. This is really, really serious. It's so hard. It's so wrong for people to be poisoned like this. Little babies. So. But I think it's better to get it taken care of in the front end instead of going through all this.
the downside of what's going to happen in the future if this continues to go on and we have a chance right now to change that and start changing it from this point on, that's where you guys are really going to help out too. And uh, we, our, our future is, is what you are right now. And so that's, that's what we, we want hope to, to see the positive results come out of that. 